debate has expired. I propose that the Senate now adjourn, and I call Senator Reynolds. Uh, thank you very much, President. Today, over 50 million people are enslaved, men, women and children, more than in any other time in human history. This servitude and exploitation of human labour and the denial of human freedoms is a $150 billion industry, and shamefully it is growing day by day. But the profits are growing off the forced labour of millions who are trapped in slavery through the supply chain for critical minerals and metals and also in the production of clean energy technologies. Yes, these commodities are crucial to the energy transition. However, they are only as clean and as ethical as the energy and the components used in their production. Now, colleagues, this is not a secret, but we cannot, we cannot go green on the backs of slave labour, on the backs of millions and millions of men, women and children, on the backs of those forced to mine the minerals and the rare earths and to fabricate the components of wind turbines, solar panels, batteries and electric vehicles. We must find ways to deal with both net zero and also forced labour and slavery. Australians have fought many wars to preserve our democratic freedoms and individual liberties in conjunctions with our many friends and allies. Despite this, we are failing to fight for the freedom for these enslaved human beings. The children mining cobalt and rare earths, the internment of millions of Uyghurs in the forced camps in Xinjiang, Tibetans who are forced into Chinese boarding schools, then shipped to China as labour. North Koreans who are indentured, indentured to China as forced labour. They're used to process quartz for solar panel photovoltaic cells. They process lithium. They produce cathodes, anodes and lithium ion battery cells. They process manganese for electric vehicle batteries. They smelt aluminium and copper. They process uranium, nickel and zinc. They manufacture the electric vehicles themselves in Xinjiang, the vehicles that we here drive, and so the list goes on and on of the commodities that they produce. Now, this reliance on slave labour also distorts the markets for critical minerals, for rare earths, in favour of Chinese products. It provides an extraordinary competitive advantage for China. But it also provides a clear security threat for ourselves, for our friends and our allies, as we simply cannot compete in the production of these goods that are made with slave labour. We are vulnerable to the strategic denial of all of these goods, goods that throughout their supply chains have forced labour and slavery. So we can, colleagues, and we must deal simultaneously with energy transition security and slavery issues. One cannot and they must not come at the cost of the other. But it takes political will and the leadership, not only here in Australia but with our friends and allies, to call this out and to take measures to stop human trafficking and strip out slavery from everybody's supply chains. So if we have the political will to work together, we can start, as I said, by calling it out. We do this by working with our friends and our allies to create alternative supply chains for mineral extraction, processing and manufacturing, one that is slavery free and one that does not provide a competitive advantage through enslavement, including in the production of wind turbines. It is not enough to preserve democracy and individual liberties in our own nations. We have to work together to preserve individual freedoms for not our, only our own children but for everyone's children. It is time to call out this silent acceptance by those net zero zealots who seem absolutely happy to say the environment is the greater good. Well, it's not. People matter. We have to deal with both. So the global transition to carbon net zero cannot come.
come at the cost of human servitude. We can call it out. Together we can call it out. It is time that we Thank do. You, Senator Thank Reynolds. you, Senator.